Hello, hello. This particular video is going to be sort of mostly about Dragon Ball Abridged, which is a very specific thing to be reacting to <laughs> another YouTube channel in a sense, but you'll understand as time goes on. Um, they recently finished, or are in the process of finishing, their commentary tracks over everything that they've made over the years. So this is sort of a follow-up to that in that sense. Uh, it's also going to be somewhat about the concept of fan fixing in regards to Dragon Ball specifically. So, if you like Dragon Ball, this is the video for you. If you just like the sound of my voice, then tune in and drift away, you gentle soul, I guess. Uh, for anyone that does not know, this is going to be an art gripe, so it's just going to be me drawing over things. This is not going to be scripted in any sort of way, if you are, for some reason, new to art gripes. Uh, a lot of people don't care for art gripes because, you know, just drawing, who cares about that? But I, their primary purpose is for me to ramble about things, so <laughs> they're, they serve their purposes. Um, so this is not going to be uh, incredibly scripted, so if I meander a little bit, that's what's going on. So uh, to that end, most of this is going to be discussion, but I needed a quick video. Uh, so I was sitting around thinking, what could I possibly draw? Um... I chose Android 16 for a couple of reasons, and I'll get to that in a second. But the main reason why I thought so is because I know a lot of people like Android 16. I was sitting around thinking, because I think it was Scott who was talking in the, uh, the, the final part three of episode 60 component of his review, uh, of their discussion. And I think he said that Android 16 was his favorite character to work on. Or at least top three. I can't remember. Go to his video. Watch their videos, by the way. Yeah, if you have not, if you do care to watch them, please go watch those videos, uh, first of all. Um, but I was standing around thinking, yeah, I really like Android 16 too. Uh, both in the actual series and also uh, in their abridged stuff as well. Um, there, there's something about them that's kind of comfy, relaxing. Yeah, he's just a, he's a cool guy. He's a swell fella. Um, however, I, even though I have such an association with Dragon Ball characters, I don't really draw them very often, which is equally funny because I used to draw them all the time back in high school, because high school, <laughs> um, and in hindsight, I probably should have gone with this sketch instead of the one that I do in a bit, but, uh, there are some people that are just absolutely amazing when it comes to drawing Dragon Ball characters. Um, I think specifically of a small circle of friends that, like, include like a. Like, here's a great example. Um, totally not Mark does a series on his channel where he takes artists that you know do uh, Dragon Ball related content, and they go back over and they do. Um, uh, redraws of specific scenes in different contexts, like doing different styles, uh, primarily, um, like trying to do shore ups on images that were not good, you know, as far as uh, individual cells, things like that. Uh, very interesting series, especially if you're an artist. If you're not an ar artist, maybe you just like to watch people draw. Maybe you just like a big handsome man, you know, whatever your reasons. Like big handsome men? Yeah, I do too. Maybe for different reasons than you, but still it's okay to like big handsome men, so go have yourself a gander at that. Pretty nice. Uh, but anyways, if you watch that series, you'll run into a lot of artists that are very good at drawing Dragon Ball characters, to the point where what I'm doing is going to make it look like a child is drawing it, because when it comes to drawing Dragon Ball characters, I am effectively an itty bitty baby. So, um, I drew this picture in like five hours. I am not practiced drawing Dragon Ball characters. Uh, I did a video about being on model a long time ago, which involved me drawing Goku. And I can't remember what I said in that video, but I, if, I have a vague memory of this. Uh, I think one of my points was that I am not used to drawing characters like this. Um, so part of the fact that you're trying to draw something on model does not mean that you're going to draw it perfectly. Uh, some of the components of being on model are still going to include drawing in the artist's original style, 
which can make it very, very difficult to do something that is completely on model while at the same time preserving what the model actually is, which is why you have people that do things like corrections. So, anyways, boring art stuff aside, if you get to the end of the video, this sucks! San Francisco 16 sucks! That's why. The I'm, I'm trying to talk about other things. Point being. Okay, so, another factor. Uh, I recently released a Hunter Hunter video, uh, which did pretty damn well. Um, I think it's not quite up to 200,000 views, but it did pretty good. I like it. Yeah, it was a good video. So go watch that, please, if you have not. Um, but that video got me thinking about the methods of success that I have and not, have not had over the years. Um, part of the reason why my channel never really took off is because I do such a huge range of content. It's not the exclusive reason, but that's part of it. Um, I will do... Like, my, my most successful videos probably have been uh, anime-related. Which is unfortunate. And uh, to the point where people have cried for me to become an anime channel in the past, which is sort of a joke, but they're also being kind of serious. Because people really like it whenever I complain and bitch and moan about anime. Which is unfortunate because I have gotten... As I've gotten older, I don't really like complaining as much. Um, and I find I have to force myself to try to be more cantankerous and upset about things. Uh, I'm, I've just become way more laid back. And uh, I was describing this on stream. As you get older, you get a little bit more laid back, and more importantly, you find that you change in various ways. And you'll find that the things that you liked about yourself as when you were younger may not necessarily be things that you like about yourself as you get older or you find that you just naturally have changed in a way. And most people have the ability to just start to like that about themselves. It's, you know, a method of processing as you get older where you actually acclimate to the person that you have become, as opposed to the person that you were when you were a teenager. So uh, part of it is just re-identifying what it is that makes you you. And uh, Android 16 sort of loops into this. Um, but... As I have gotten older, unfortunately, because I'm a content creator, I also have to still be wacky and unhinged and off the wall and all that other stupid bullshit. So even though I have more of an urge to be wholesome and uplifting and all this other horse shit like that, um, I still have to try to force myself to retain some of my quote-unquote old personality so that I can continue to be entertaining, so that I can continue to you know, earn an income, which is a very weird sensation. Uh, most people don't have that. They can just be who they want to be. Uh, it's like the equivalent of, like, whenever you're self-employed, you have to be worrying about uh, work all the time. Whenever you're doing something for fun, all you're thinking about is, well, can I monetize this? Uh, should I be spending my time working right now? Whereas whenever you are doing a 9-to-5, once you're done with your 9-to-5, you just go home. And whenever you're playing a game with friends online or whatever, then you can be assured that this is your time. You don't have to worry about whether or not this is going to come back to haunt you in six months when you're, when the algorithm decides that you're not worth watching anymore. And you know, it's, you get it. Uh, so one of the reasons why I wanted to do the bridge sort of reaction thing is part of that. Um, how do I describe this? I don't want to just talk. I don't. This video is not going to be about me talking specifically about them or what they're doing. So much as a lot of it is going to loop back into why they do it. In watching the video, and of course, there's lots of interesting things that they talk. If you want to actually have the experience of experiencing why it's an interesting commentary, then you know, go check them out. Um, but to me, it's more, I was watching it, and then talking about the people that they met, and how their lives changed, and uh, their emotional reaction to it. That was the thing that more interested me, because I'm, you know, a content creator. Um, and I have similar experiences, but I did not have the success that they had. Uh, although, you might, depending on their personal um lens, uh, they might not even say that they became successes, I'm not really sure. 
Um, it is... But, like, I understand why they stopped. And this is more the point. They didn't stop specifically because of burnout. Or they didn't stop specifically because of... And please correct me on this if I'm wrong. They didn't stop specifically because of, uh, you know, uh, like copyright claims or the algorithm and uh, so on. It was more just uh, a personal... It's more they were making what they wanted to make. And once they had made it and they found that they no longer wanted to make it, they didn't want to keep doing it just to do it. And there's a lot to be said about that. And that's sort of primarily what I want to discuss. It's the concept of doing what you love and why you're doing it. And this is part of why I decided to draw Android 16 as well. Um, in all things, whether you are an online content creator or not, whether you're you know just working as an electrician, as a plumber or whatever, I had a, a plumber in chat actually uh, in my stream uh, made the comment of he was surprised that he actually made much more money than I did when I was describing how little money I actually make. Um, and I was I was describing on stream, you know, just how much satisfaction you can derive from having a, a job like that uh, in the sense of you are working on your own time and it can be something that you ne necessarily are passionate about, you know, plumbing. But it is something where you are completely free. I was uh, telling someone else recently that my ideal job would probably be just driving from one place to another, pulling a lever, and then going home. <laughs> it's like a, a telephone technician uh, repairing the line when, like, say your job is, oh, I know that there's probably a frayed wire or something, like a little a bolt somewhere is degraded. Uh, but most people don't know how not serious that actually is. So whenever I get there, all I have to do is like spend five minutes on my own, like I'm completely alone, um, just like unscrewing something and then screw it back in, and then I'm spending the rest of the t my time looking on the phone, pretending that I'm working, <laughs> uh, something like that. Um, I, w I wouldn't actually, yeah. But uh, point being. When people talk about doing what you love, it's not just a matter of finding something where you can be lazy. Uh, it's something that ties into the core of who you are as a person. And in the course of the Bridge guys making what they were making, uh, a lot of it came down to that. Uh, the reason why that they were doing this on Dragon Ball is because, specifically before they even got started, and they can tell this story much better than I can, I'm just regurgitating what they said, so go watch them again. They were saying that they just agreed, if you were going to do an abridged series, what would you do? And they agreed, Dragon Ball. Uh, there, there's something unique about Dragon Ball, especially for, you know, young men. Um, it is a generic enough show that it is easily approachable. And it doesn't really have complex themes, but it, they are sort of there at the same time. And that's one of the most interesting things that I've always found about Dragon Ball. Is that it has so much room for projection. And if you guys have watched my videos like Let's Gripe About Villains, for example, or uh, Healing from uh, Venom, the video about Phantom Pain, I talk a lot about uh, projection and how much that dominates our daily lives. We construct ideas of like heroes and villains based on projection. We take the things that are important to us and we project those onto other people to vilify them or raise them up to be heroes when in fact they're just ordinary people doing things for their own individual reasons. But because it's something that's important to us, that's vital to us, we project more qualities onto them to raise them up to being something that they're not. Uh, which just ends up disappointing us, of course. But, point being, Dragon Ball itself is rife with the ability to project things onto the characters, because the way that the show is written is that it has a lot of potential that is not often realized because the creator himself doesn't really care to get into things like that. He's the, I've made the joke before, but he's the guy that likes drawing the 
funny poo-poo on a stick joke. And that's kind of it as far as Toriyama is concerned. He's a, for and foremost, he's like a gag manga sort of guy. Um, the, the father of all shonen, like, that's one of the weird things. Dragon Ball's the father of shonen, but at the same time, it didn't begin that way. It's, it's not like he had a dream to be the, the fight manga guy. He was never like that. That's one of the most interesting things about that to me, is that he's a completely different person. It's just that, that are, that's the thing that took off. It's like the tournament format. And then he realized, oh, people really like this fighting aspect of it. Uh, the comedy is still there, but, you know. And uh, content creation is sort of the same way. Like, I do primarily, like, this this art stuff, and I do video essays, uh, sure, on the side. And, like, recently I did the um, the scary video thing where I was reading uh, Creepypasta as a test, just to see if people would like it. And, you know, they did. It wasn't that successful, but they did. I have a lot of diverse content on my channel, and that's part of my problem. Um, but the thing that wants to take off more than anything else is going to be the anime-related content. So that's sort of my uh, uh, shonen. That's my battle manga problem. Is I did a lot of things that people sort of liked, but nothing really had mainstream appeal besides that and nothing else. So if I personally, if I wanted my channel to really take off, I would have to focus on that which has always been a big disappointment to me, but that's what it is, you know. Uh, I will continue to make anime-related content and anime videos that are incendiary in some cases because that's what succeeds on this platform. And that is what it is. Um, but when it comes to projection and drag ball and whatnot, you can see why it's such a good platform for people to have ideas. And that's, I imagine, is what attracted them to this series in the first place. Uh, it's a fun little show to watch, but also there's so much that goes into the individual scenes and motivations of the characters that are just not explored. And when there's that sort of dissatisfaction, I suppose, or an incompleteness to watching media, it makes you want to explore it and discuss it and expand on it, which is why so many things have fan content. And uh, Dragon Ball is rife with fan content. There are all sorts of examples of different people doing different forms of media in which they're exploring those ideas because the format of Dragon Ball is not one that is really for exploring nuanced ideas or... Take my uh, video about Gohan's Mini Mass, for example. It's one of the, I think, my better videos. Uh, a lot of that uh, stemmed from uh, Grey Mind putting so much effort into the editing. Um, that video deals a lot, like I even at the very end uh, go over what could have been done differently to change up the story so that it had more impact, because I was talking about Gohan's transformation. And of course I, I still agree with that video. Um, a lot of that is projection. The ending that I created would not be one that would ever, ever ever be in the actual series. And it doesn't belong in the actual series. It doesn't fit the tone. Uh, it doesn't fit the way that information and uh, narratives and characters have always, always been delivered in the series. There are a lot of things that you can do with Dragon Ball, but those belong in the realm of things like an abridged series or fan fiction or um, uh, the Jinshis and so on. They belong there because that's the difference between doing something that is on model or off model. with in respect to it's, it's like handing off the writing of a series to a completely unrelated writer or a novelist a novelist's son like Tolkien for example this situation inheriting everything from his father after his father's death and now it's his responsibility to finish his father's work or assemble it or whatever Although they were very close, and even if the original author, and Berserk is another good example of this, I suppose, even if the original author had lots of notes and described it constantly as to what exactly he was going to do, what his intentions were, what his plans were, what the big reveals were, what the spoilers were, 
the, the way that that narrative could be delivered by their closest confidant is not going to be the same ever as it would be if it were them. It will never be the same. So whenever you take fans that watch something and they find their own reasons for liking something, and they go back over and try to fan fix things, they can succeed in the sense of other people with uh, noted similarities to them as, as far as how they think can watch that and go, oh yeah, it should have been that way. Like the Gohan's Many Mass things. It, it is true that, yes, um, in watching that sequence, there can be dissatisfaction in watching it. In the sense of, oh, Gohan should have had more of an attachment to 16. He should have had this reaction to his father and so on. And sure, realistically, that may be true. But that's not Toriyama's voice. That's your voice. And in... If I were to be writing Dragon Ball, or any of us were to be writing Dragon Ball, it would end up being a completely different kind of series with different uh, sentiments and different focuses on characters, and maybe not even any fighting at all, depending on who's writing it. And that's not going to be the same thing. Uh, whenever you are watching someone create something, you have to take the ups with the downs. You have to be able to accept that you don't have control of the steering wheel, and that's part of the beauty of it. Uh, the fact that they are able to create something that is so unique and particular to them, you don't need to try to stifle what they have done by claiming that they're erroneous in some way, When, especially if you're sitting there with your hands folded, you know, creating nothing on your own, or something that is markedly inferior. I would not be able to create Dragon Ball. Um, I don't know what their opinion the Dragon Ball guys are, if they had total access to resources and the ability to make whatever it is that they want to make, you know, infinite money, whatever, and time, and they had to create their own series, then I would imagine, like, I'm not close friends with them. Uh, you know, I've talked, you know, I, actually, yeah, I've talked to all three of them individually. Um, but, um,. I don't think that any of them would say that they would be able to create something that is better than Dragon Ball. Um, they're more than happy to just, you know, be making what is effectively fan content. Uh, to be able to honor the original of something that they loved. Definitely nothing wrong with that. Uh, it takes something very special and unique. You have to be sort of an eccentric personality, in a sense, to be able to make something that is wholly unique, that... Especially it's something that gives birth to something like an entire genre, like Battle Shonen. Um, there's no way you can replicate that. You can just watch what they do and then try to shore it up and polish it. Which is fine. That's how ideas get started. Any technology, there's no such thing as a technology or a new idea or a cultural change or anything that is completely new and stems only from itself. There are only things that are adapted from other ideas that are iterations on those same, same ideas. Um, that's always going to be true. So if you ever sit around thinking, well, this isn't like my thing, make it your thing, but also be aware there's no such thing as an original idea. Uh, that's said for a reason. It's said for a very good reason. All technologies are always just built on like other technologies that someone notices lying around and then says, oh, I could put these two things together. And also, no one's really bothered, but this one part of it could be a little bit more efficient. So if I do this, then both of these things work together, and now it's a new idea. And there's very few examples of anything, like, say they've mentioned electricity or something. Um, or they've mentioned the discovery of electricity. Uh, even something like that. It's still... It was still something that was being worked on at the time, and it was a race, almost, between uh, inventors to try to head everyone off and get to it first before everyone else did. And uh, Edison is the one that just kind of stole it from... Um, I can't even remember the other guy's name in Ghost to Show. Uh, what effect that it had, because I can't remember the guy's name. The guy, the guy that actually got to it first, but he didn't patent it. And Edison was a, a thief, a well-known thief these days. Um, so he's the one that actually ended up reaping the benefits of it. 
But point being, even something like that, that seems like, well, how can you build off that? It was still a well-known thing that people were working towards at the time. It's just that no one could really quite get a handle on it uh, until it seemed like it was something that was like, oh, of course it works this way. Uh, anyways, just, I'm, getting, I'm not an expert on that, so I'm trying not to talk out my ass, which is making me talk more out of my ass. So, um, Point being, <laughs> when it comes to doing something like abridged content, that's the source of it. It's that projection, that desire to try to... It's, it's that desire to take something that you see in a product, pull that out, put it on the table, look at it, and go, what value do I find in this? What can I do with it? What does this mean to me? And that's exactly what the abridged series of uh, Dragon Ball did. As simple as it is. Sure, it's just a abridged series of Dragon Ball. And uh, it's not like high art or anything like that. But as time goes on, and they got better and better at what they were doing, they got more proficient at it. You could see that change between it simply being reactionary fan content of haha. The scene was funny uh, out of context and we're poking fun at that until it starts changing into something that is uniquely its own with its own characters, its own focuses on how those characters behave. Like everything changed, um, which is in a way sort of what partially got them in trouble in a sense. Then I guess it's a Japanese studio and that's a whole other thing um, because it actually shifts the a tone of what the characters are and it can misrepresent what the original was in a sense. So th th that's that part of it as well, I suppose. Um, but what is, I guess, beauteous to me is the fact that they were able to realize all this uh, like literally to literally both, both uh, literal versions of this. They were able to uh, be aware of it that they were doing it, and at the same time, uh, follow through and actualize it. Um, they did this for years, and more importantly, that it became something that defined their lives, even though it's just fan content. And more importantly, they helped to bring out things like the character of someone like Android 16. Um, something I discussed in the Hunter Hunter video is Komagi, the, uh, uh, blind girl. I think she was blind. But the infirm girl that uh, was playing games with the king is the one that ended up defeating him by elevating him to become more than what he was born to be. And in all forms of content, what I feel like is the most important thing to do is to be able to elevate the content to be more than what it was. And I've had this experience too. With the bridge stuff, I feel like as it went on, it became a little bit more serious to the point where um... It either was going to be like self-referential humor, where you're, you're following back on the uh, same jokes that you've been doing, and uh, or uh, it would become too serious to the point of bordering sometimes on melodrama, because that became that voice of the series in a sense. Uh, that's why I say when it comes to Toriyama, it takes someone very unique where your sensibilities are exclusively on being anchored to that original gag manga. Like, your personality has to be such that you're dipping into something that people love, but then you're pulling back out. So you remain seemingly consistent for years and years and years. Even for decades afterwards, the voice of that series never changes into something else. And that is extremely hard to do. And with content creation, it's the same thing. Like I was talking about, as I get older, my sensibilities and my outlook and everything changes, so I'm having to, like, dip back into that old cantankerous plague of gripes and I'm trying to make sure that my videos are still entertaining in that respect whereas I would just otherwise be talking like this all the time which is not that interesting to most people it's niche um, and in content creation you always have that problem you're trying to figure out what people want and then you're trying to take that one tiny element of your personality and then amplify it in such a way that you become a caricature of yourself and the things that you make end up becoming caricatures of themselves um so, more than anything else, the fact that they ended before Boo got started, I think I would never blame them for that. And more importantly, I think it is extremely admirable of them to have realized we can keep going. And even now, like they, 
now they may even feel like, oh, yeah, we could do boo if we wanted to. Like, we, we're not as burnt out anymore and so on. They're doing the Hiffle stuff and everything, of course. Um, that they know better, though, because they know that it wouldn't be the same thing. That their motivations and everything have completely changed and they, they just know better. This shows how smart that, uh, that they are. Uh, Lenny Kurt and uh, Scott. Um, and, of course, everyone that is... Uh, you know, uh, tangential and everything as well. I don't want to exclude anyone, but, you know, I, I don't know everyone's names. I'm sorry. Um, but point being, like, me personally, I love the Bridge series because I just, I really enjoy Dragon Ball stuff. Uh, I don't really talk about it as much as uh, I probably could. Um, but I've, I've always loved Dragon Ball stuff. Uh, and seeing them do effectively what all of us have always done in our living rooms for so many years. And then that evolved into the thing that I also do, where I like to expand and overanalyze and uh, like try to fully realize the characterization of things that I've been enjoying for so many years. Like, the, I don't, like, I'm not friends with them exactly. Like I said, I've spoken to each of them. I've talked to Kurt on call before. Um, and he's a really nice guy. Um, the only I've had like one person say don't be around him like he's a bad person but the person that told me that is an asshole that actually has mistreated me which should go to show what uh, people gossiping about people online gets you um, Scott really great guy um, watching him react so emotionally I wish I had that in me to be able to react that emotionally to get that overwhelmed with things which you would think, oh, no, you would want to not be emotional. No, I've always envied people that are able to experience that, to be overwhelmed with... Because it goes to show how much of an impact it had on all of them uh, and how important and vital it was and how much uh, it meant to the community that it built around it. Because ultimately, well, even if it's something is just like a silly little, you know, internet thing, whatever it is, like the stuff that I do... Uh, a lot of it doesn't necessarily... It's not important. It's not going to resonate through history. And uh, that goes for everyone else. Um, all the things that we do, they're not going to be things that are going to be impactful for centuries later or anything like that. Uh, but they're, they're important to the people that have similar backgrounds and have similar experiences and have similar thoughts. And making content like that is a, a part of reaching out and helping to helping one another to unite and develop as a community and so on. Um, I wish I had more time to talk about it. <laughs> the, the video's already done. Uh, I'd love to ramble about such things, but whatever. Point being, the bridge content is like the epitome of what I would like to live up to in order to be the best kind of content creator that I could conceivably be. And I have done a bad job myself over the years of focusing, of, you know, trying not to spread myself out, trying to focus on something that a, a, a much wider range of people can enjoy and access. So I'm trying to get better at that. It is difficult. Uh, so to that end, uh, I will focus a little bit more on making videos that I know that more people will enjoy, but... I'm also trying to make sure that my niche is happy, and trying to do all those things is very difficult, which is why I'm trying to release this video alongside a Baldur's Gate 3 review video that I'm also releasing today. So the Baldur's Gate 3 video is going to go up first, and then I'm going to release the Arkwright video on the same day, just to see what happens, which is why this is such a spur-of-the-moment video. I'm just trying to get it done as fast as possible. So uh, hopefully my niche audience that are listening to this will be entertained by it, will enjoy the sound of my voice, and so on. And the people that like more directed content will be willing to subscribe to my channel because that's the source of this. People saying, I like this video you made, but I notice that you do a bunch of like art stuff and you know other things that I don't care about. So I'm not going to subscribe, I'm not going to like your content because I don't want it getting, my feed getting flooded with your videos. Which is really disappointing, but it is what it is. I understand it. Most uh, channels that do this sort of thing, 
even if they have a very minor change in their content format, they will make a completely new YouTube channel that does almost the same exact thing, has the exact same people. It's just rebranded very, very slightly so that people will have something else to, dis, uh, to uh, subscribe to if they're not into that exact thing. I don't have a team. It's just me. I don't have an editor. I don't have like a marketing team or anything like that. It's just me. Like, it's just me. Uh, I don't have the money to be able to hire someone else, but maybe that'll change if I manage to get better at writing and recording my scripts and shipping them out as quickly as I possibly can. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to try because uh, I want to be able to live up to my own potential. And uh, this has been difficult to do over the course of my life, but it's something that I definitely want to uh, try my hand at. So thank you guys for being patient with me. Thank you for being patient with this rambly ass video. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed 16 here, who is not my best drawing because I'm not used to drawing men. I'm not used to drawing Dragon Ball characters, even though when I was in high school, that's all that I drew, Dragon Ball and men. I never drew women, strangely enough. Uh, and I, you can even see it today, my uh, drawing style, you can see that it began with Dragon Ball and then changed into something else. Which loops again back into exactly what I was talking about. Taking something that you love and then elaborating on it. That's where everything gets started. So, uh, hopefully, in my wide range of nonsensical topics, you can find something that you guys have enjoyed and then realize, oh, this is what I want to do with it. Make something yourselves. Like, if you want to take anything away from this video as well, make something yourself. Uh, whatever it is that you find to be the most interesting component of it, explore that idea. That's what writing and drawing and everything is. It's uh, sitting down and just trying to figure out why exactly you like something or why you don't like something. If you aren't learning, then you aren't writing correctly. This is how it goes. Okay. Anyways, check out uh, Dragon Ball Bridge. Check out their commentary tracks. Uh, even if you don't like it, just do it because I told you to. That's why I have this whip. All right. Be critical, be kind, guys. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.